um, originally I had a film called Pusoy that was a, a bit different. Uh, it wasn't like a sexy film. It was, uh, <laughs> it's still about gambling. It's still about family. Um, but I pitched it to a producer here and um, he said, said, you know what? Like uh, you should repackage this a little bit for Viva Max, make it a little sexy. And um, that's what I did. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was really exciting. I never, you know, it's like, it's something I never thought about. You know, sometimes you're even a little scared of putting sex scenes in because depending on the audience, it might, um, it might narrow the audience a little bit. So to make a film where you know that's more what it's geared towards uh, is, is interesting and exciting. I never really got to like work those muscles out before. So I, I really liked it. It was really exciting for me. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I've, I've directed, like a, I did a commercial that had people in lingerie and I've done things where people kissed, but um, never, never, uh, never this extreme, you know, like there's, there's, it's like BDSM, you know, like there, there's whips, there's, they tie people up <laughs> um, because it, uh, you know, the film has uh, like a master and submissive, a dominant and submissive hierarchy to the sex scenes. They're not just like people having sex. It's like, um, there's hierarchy, there's power, uh, involved, so there's uh, there's a lot going on in the sex scenes. So it's not just like people making love; it's like also like uh, story related and uh, uh, theme related. So um, it's it's like new generation, but then a little bit of the old generation because Baron Geisler is in the film, so he's a more experienced actor. And then um, some of the actors, they don't have sex scenes, but they're like Julio Diaz is in the film. Like he doesn't have a sex scene, but he, he acts in the film. So there's, there's like older generation also. Um, how I protect them is I have like, they're very tastefully done the sex scenes, you know? Like um, we, they're not, it doesn't feel like soft core porn or anything like that. You know, it's, uh, I didn't look, I wasn't inspired by porn for the film. I was inspired by like other sex scenes in other films, like art films and um, uh, my own personal life, like things that I personally enjoy um, a little bit. So it's not, uh, it shouldn't be gratuitous. It should be, if you watch the film, it's not gratuitous. It may be like intense, <laughs> um, but it's not, uh, uh, Hopefully, like, we tried to create a very uh, healthy, comfortable environment, a very safe environment. Um, so, you know, we asked them all their requirements, all their restrictions. Uh, we re really respected that. I didn't, we didn't try to push that at all. Like, if there's something, there's a few things that they're uncomfortable with. So we just, we just said, we're not going to do that. Daring. Yeah, if, if I can elaborate, I you know it explores like underground gambling uh, in in uh, different gambling dens. Uh, so it's kind of a interesting world to explore. And then um, it's about a group of card hustlers. So you get to see the power dynamics between them. Um, so it's uh, yeah, it's, I think it's a really like daring film. So we did research. We did uh, some immersive research, but. Mm -hmm. The, the film is inspired by a scene I saw in Ammo, um, Brillante Mendoza's film. Um, so it's not, it's not based off an actual event that happened. Um, it's inspired by real things and real people, but it's not from one specific story. It's more inspired by like the world of, of gambling. Um, so you're saying they have, it's, you're saying they're not like brand new. Like yes. It, yeah, sure. Um, well, I think Janelle, I think Janelle had only, Janelle T, she had only worked on uh, maybe one or two other projects before this. But yeah, everyone else has done quite a bit uh, of like Viva stuff or or like Baron's done a fair amount of, <laughs> he's been yeah. working forever. Um, Did you, yeah. Yeah, so uh, to answer your question, um, 
you know, it's uh, Brillante Mendoza was the producer. So we kind of adopted his style. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's that it's, it's that unique style. Like they don't have a script. There's no mm -hmm. script. They're, they they don't know. They know their character. They know what the character wants. They know the dynamic that they have, but they don't they don't know what the next scene is. They don't know what they're shooting that day. <laughs> um, we just tell them like right before we film. So it, they know about the character, but they don't know like what's going to happen. So only right before the scene, we tell them, oh, you know, you're going to do this and then this is going to happen. Um, and then we may only give them one line of dialogue each. Uh, that's like the max. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think for me, working with so many different actors, because um, the cast is like stacked, like <laughs> there's a lot of like really, really talented people and we got along so well. Um, so mm -hmm. kind of establishing so many characters um, in the, because not, it's, not, it's not just one, one character's journey. There's many people struggling with a lot of things. Like um, Vince's character um, has a sick mother that he's trying to, he loves dearly and he's trying to support. But then he also has a wife that, that wants to leave. Um, so he's like, he's a father, but then he's also, he, he's really dealing with a lot at home. And then he's also dealing with a lot, very stressful uh, work. And then Baron has issues with his daughter and his wife, um, but he's also has issues um, going on with like the gambling and, and the pressure that's being placed on him um, to pay off the general. And then Janelle has, it's all, it's like basically like, it's all, it's, it's all about like um, paternal, uh, sorry, uh, fraternal like issues, like with the family and then also professional, like, uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's like, the whole film is kind of like a sprint because they're they're all dealing with so so many things at such a high level. I'm always interested in betrayal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I kind of feel like I experienced some of that, and um, I wasn't expecting it. Uh, I was really shocked by it, um, and that that seems to be that was a the that's a theme of you know loyalty and betrayal is a theme in Pesoy, and then. Um, I'm writing a new film now called Pabuya, um, which is also about betrayal. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Derek. Um, how are you? Um, I've had the pleasure of actually seeing you like a couple of uh, months ago uh, during the premiere of one of uh, Derek Mendoza's, uh, uh, Brillante uh, Mendoza's uh, film, um. of course. Uh, we ate <laughs> yeah, <laughs> during that fun. time. Yeah. yeah. Um, you had a combination of like experienced indie actors and of course new stars in this film. What was like the most difficult part in putting them all together? Um, yeah, because you have you have people that are quite experienced, then you have people that are mm -hmm. more new. Um, actually, had a really good experience on this. I didn't really, <laughs> it wasn't really that challenging. Um, mm -hmm. I think the, the less experience, no, it's not true. <laughs> like, uh, I was going to say the less experienced actors had a little more questions, but actually the more experienced actors also have <laughs> lots of questions also. Um, mm -hmm. I think because in my last, in my short film, we had I had like John, Arce John Arcelia, um, who's very experienced, and I had Mercedes Cabral, and then I had non-actors. So I come from, uh, it's very comfortable for me, because I come from like working with non-actors. So mm. to work with like newer actors or less experienced actors, uh, it's not really an issue for me, because I, I, I come from that. Um, my, my short films, I always like to work with non-actors. So, um, just making sure that they're not acting, that they're, mm -hmm. they're listening, that they're present, and uh, uh, they're not trying to like overly impress me or the other actors. That's maybe the only challenge, is to just make sure they're in the moment. 
and they're not they're not scared of like their inexperience or anything. Do you but think I, that you had to like mainly like research uh, their past projects before you would actually put them into like a scene? No, <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't do that. Some of the actors were. Um, uh, it was just like Viva recommended them, and I, I trusted. Mm. Yeah, so Viva, like Viva said, we think these people will be good. So some some people I, I asked for, and then some people Viva just like recommended, and then I, I was comfortable with them, so we, we did it. Uh, with some of the um, unfamiliar um, things that Brillante Mendoza also does, um, you're you're practically also doing that. Um, in this film, which is um, some sort of like not giving them any resource uh, with their characters, but just giving them like specific lines and specific instances before they do like take a scene. Um, has that been difficult with the actors at all? Um, we did. Uh, Brillante, Derek Brillante was really generous. He let us do like a test. Mm -hmm. So I tested out two of the scenes. Um, with uh with janelle janelle t and vince really on and then um angelie kong and mm -hmm. um so we got to test out a few scenes so i got to kind of work <laughs> for the first time like that and then they got to try it out um mm -hmm. and then once you're in it you're in it so it's just like <laughs> you gotta go you know there's no like like you tell them what to do and then two minutes like five minutes later you're shooting so it's like, <laughs> you got to just go with it, you know? Yeah. And this is uh, very promising, but um, what are your plans as far as uh, distributing uh, this particular project? Um, are you planning to just put them mainly on festivals uh, for competitions or uh, are you planning to like mainly put this in like a commercial uh, kind of setup to put them in like a public theater of some sort? Yeah, so it's uh, it's for Viva Max, so it'll stream on Viva Max, and then uh, before that we'll have a premiere, which I hope you can all attend. Um, mm -hmm. We'll have a premiere in the cinema just for press, um, mm -hmm. and then I'll also we'll do a cut that has less sex in it. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So I have like some relationship with some festivals that I really enjoy, and mm -hmm. hopefully they'll they'll be open to uh, you know watching it and maybe selecting it. So do you think that sexiness wasn't really like um, a necessity of sort to tell the story? Well, there's nine. <laughs> <laughs> nine sex scenes. So, mm. uh, so I'll, the festival cut will have less because nine mm. is quite a, oh, my, All right. my, my background is so grainy. Um, yeah, so uh, maybe we'll get it down to five or six. All right. I'm pretty sure uh, people will really like it on the platform. Thank you so much, uh, Derek, uh, for this chance to interview you. Yeah. For the general audience, I think it's really good. But for festivals, we'll just slim it down. All right. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. I think awards films always have a different approach and market than mainstream films. So this is a little I try to I try to walk I try to walk the line between a mainstream film and an awards film because I want it. I want a good story. I want it to be good acting. And I want to care about character. Um, but then also you have to have a bit faster pace. Uh, awards, mm -hmm. awards films can take their time and can be more specific with their audience. They don't have to be as broad. So it. It's very rare that an awards film has a huge box office release. Most times, Hollywood studios, if they're making an award film, they, they, they know this is more of an awards film. This is not, you know, they're not going for as, as wide of a theatrical release. And they're okay with that, uh, which I love. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. He's like a racehorse. <laughs> like he's like, it's like astonishing. Like he can just turn these gears that you, you don't expect. So um, it's really impressive. Baron's really, uh, I was shocked. Some takes, uh, I was just like blown away. Like I, like he did things I didn't know actors could do. And he's really like, uh, 
something to watch. <laughs> yeah, because uh, it's not, you know, there's there's really only one scene that's kind of a traditional love scene. Like everything else is, um, you know, they're into like BDSM or like being tied up or, um, you know, certain, certain things that um, they can really play with. Like, um, it's almost like an acting exercise, like, like be a dog or be a cat, you know, it's like, um, like I've, I, I'm not an actor, but as a director, I've taken direct, uh, acting classes just to learn. And they're like, uh, there's, there's role playing. Um, and it's not just between the characters. It's like, um, uh, has to do with power. So, uh, yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, I think they had a lot of fun with it because it's not like just a typical, uh, it gives them something to play with. I think if you give them something to do, it's more fun. Yeah. Well, I'm a writer director. I've always thought of myself as a writer director. I never yes. thought of it separate. Um, I went to school for English okay. literature. I went to my undergraduate degree is in English literature. So I always like, mm -hmm studied writing, like books and um, poems and plays. And then um, one day, I never thought about directing. I always just thought I was going to be a director. I never thought about it. Like I never, sorry, I always thought about I was going to be a director, but I never like did anything about it. <laughs> and one day I saw a bus go by, mm -hmm. there was like, a poster for a movie. And I was like, why are they making that movie and not my movie? And I was like, I was like 20 years old or something. And I was like, well, you have to like write a movie mm. first. They're not gonna like just, <laughs> hey Phil, wanna make a movie? Um, so it made me realize, okay, I wanna do this. And um, uh, my best friend also was interested in making movies. So we made our first movie together um, that summer. And um, it was one of those things where as soon as you try it, it's like, oh my God, like, this is it. Like, this is the thing I'm best at in, in life. Like, I'm so bad at most things, you know? And it's just like so nice to find something like that, that I love. So it's like this perfect match. Um, sorry, I think I might have only answered half of your question. I think you have to I think it's very separate jobs because even as a director, once if you're a writer, if you're a writer director, once you're the director, mm -hmm. you have to put your writer cap on. You forget on. about being you to, yes. You have to you have to it's like you have your writer's cap on and you write. And then you, you sit down as a director, and then with your director's cap, you do a, a pass because mm -hmm. like you were, as the writer, you were only thinking about the writing and the themes and how this ties together. But now you have to make the thing. So <laughs> you have mm -hmm. to take stuff out, you have to add stuff um, as the director. So mm -hmm. maybe the only advantage is that you like the person because <laughs> you are the same person. <laughs> um, and mm -hmm. you can kind mm -hmm. of like have the understanding of where the writer was coming from because you're the same person. But sometimes you look at the script and you're like, why did he write that? Like, <laughs> but it's you. <laughs> I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> um, you, it, yeah, it can be hard. <laughs> it's just, you just have to like, yeah. Um, because I was owed. But you don't see yourself um, yeah, re owed. resorting the kind of life. Okay. No, But no. you don't see yourself. You don't see yourself talking to that kind of light that the characters that you've created in the film, that you, you play cards or whatever. Never. Okay. I've never stolen anything. I've never, I never used force. <laughs> it's not me. Mm -hmm. I'm not like that. Um, but. Okay. okay. Yeah, I've had, I, I, that was old money from five different people. Quite a substantial amount of money. Okay. Uh, so uh, you just have mm -hmm. to like let them know, <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. You can I threaten. understand. <laughs> you can threaten, but I've never, <laughs> never, um, never done anything like this. No. Um. Well, also, I hope, um, hope everyone can just kind of 
not only focus on Pusoy, but you know the fact that uh, you know I'm an American and I, I moved here and I love I love making films and commercials here and um, I hope to be here for the breadth of my career and um, I really love the culture here and um, I don't see myself leaving. And I really found a, a home here and I you know I really want to collaborate with um, other other. Uh, make, make more films here and make more commercials here and collaborate with people um, that are from here. Um, if anyone wants to reach out to me, I'm open to, to do projects and um, meet and uh, I'm just very, you know, open to, <laughs> to to um, expanding my network and, and meeting more, more folks.